When it comes to invasive species, some of the toughest to deal with are the invasive vines. Complicating matters is the fact that many of the invasive vines are closely related to species native to North America, so being able to tell them apart is critical when applying control measures to the invasives. We don't want to be accidentally eliminating native species after all. A great example of similar looking natives and invasives are the wisterias. There is one species of wisteria native to eastern North America, the American wisteria, Wisteria frutescens, which has a wide native range but is most common in the southeast and has been introduced well outside of its native range. There are also two introduced and highly invasive Asian wisteria species in eastern North America, the Chinese wisteria, Wisteria sinensis, and the Japanese wisteria, Wisteria floribunda. The introduced ranges of these two invasive wisterias overlap the range of our native wisteria. The Asian wisterias are commonly planted as landscape plants and they easily escape cultivation and can quickly overwhelm native plant communities and can even overtop and kill large trees. They also look very similar to our native wisteria. So how can we tell these two invasive wisteria species from our native wisteria? Well, there are several traits we can use. First, there are obvious differences in the seed pods. The seed pods of American wisteria are smooth. Those of both Asian species have a velvety, fuzzy texture. The seed pods hang on the vines for quite some time, so this is a good way to tell them apart. Second is the size of the racemes, or flower clusters. Both Chinese wisteria and Japanese wisteria have longer racemes than American wisteria. American wisteria has racemes that average three to six inches in length, Chinese wisteria has racemes that average 6 to 12 inches in length, and Japanese wisteria has the longest racemes, which average 12 to 18 inches in length. There is also a difference in when the species start to bloom. American wisteria begins to bloom well after the leaves have begun emerging. Both Asian species will bloom slightly before or as the leaves start to emerge. If you love to learn how to identify invasive species and tell them apart from their native lookalikes, then get out your magnifying glass and go identify that like button. Keeping all these plant traits straight can be tough and a good guide can be a big help when you are out in the field checking out plants. A handy guide that will not only help you ID the forbs, grasses, ferns, vines, and shrubs you come across, but also points out their wildlife uses is Forest Plants of the Southeast and Their Wildlife Uses by Miller & Miller. This handy guide is sectioned by plant type, and although it isn't a complete guide to every plant out there, it does contain those that you are most likely to encounter. It makes a great addition to any Habitat Manager's library, and I'm sure you will love it as much as I do. I will put a link to it in the description. This is an affiliate link, which simply means we get a small commission if you buy the book. No extra charge to you, Simply, we get a small commission from the seller, which helps support the channel. The direction the vines twine up a support also varies between species. The American and Chinese wisterias twine up a support in a counterclockwise direction, and the Japanese wisteria twines up in a clockwise direction. This is not a characteristic that will necessarily tell you if you're looking at an invasive wisteria, but it is a good way to tell which invasive wisteria you are looking at if you have other characteristics available that point to it being one. The Asian wisterias are just two of dozens of invasive vine species that are invading native plant communities across North America. I put a video together that covers a dozen invasive vine species that are amongst the worst, which you can check out right here, and be sure to take some time and enjoy nature in your backyard.